We're now going to look at using the ortho and polar settings in AutoCAD itself. I'm using the drawing for drawing with accuracy ortho polar complete. You can use the drawing for drawing with accuracy ortho polar .dwg. What I'm going to do is leave you with a finished version again like I've done for previous videos. So we're in the drawing itself and what we'll do we'll go to the home tab on the ribbon just pop to the layers panel just make sure that your current layer is the object layer like so the green one. And then what we're going to do is make sure that we're in the model tab and we're going to look at the ortho setting first. Now you can use the function key 8 to switch ortho on and off or you can use down here the ortho setting ortho mode here. Now at the moment it's switched off. Now if I switch this on as it says there on the flyout I'm going to restrict my cursor orthogonally. Now it's a bit of a weird word to say especially with an English accent but if I switch that on now and I go up to the line command and I come into the drawing area it's prompting me to specify my first point. Now I'm going to click down here bottom left and I'm going to come up and no matter which way I move the crosshair I am restricted in the X and Y directions. Now this is a really really useful tool if you're working with regular shapes because I can just use direct distance entry now so if I go up there and type in 5 in the distance box and press enter and then come this way and type 7 and press enter and then come down this way and type in 3 and press enter and then go this way type in 4 and press enter and then come down again like this down here and I can just draw as much as I want to. Now I could use my object snap tracking if I hover on that point there I can still use it and orthogonally can you see I've got the intersection there I click and then it's a right click and a close like we've done before and you can see there that that's a nice regular shape and I haven't had to worry about any angles because I'm drawing orthogonally as in perpendicular to each other using the x and y axes. So I'm just going to pan that across a little bit now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to my polar tracking now. Now polar tracking is where I'm restricting the cursor to specified angles. Now if I switch polar tracking on you'll notice it's off at the moment. You'll notice that ortho automatically switches off. You can only have one or the other switched on like so. So I've got my polar switched on now and what I'm going to do now is click on the fly out arrow next to it and you can see that I've got various default settings in the list. I'm going to go into my tracking settings. I'll just drag this dialog box up into the center of the screen. So there's the polar tracking tab and the polar tracking is on. The increment angle at the moment is 45 degrees. I'm going to add an additional angle and click on new and that's going to be 35 degrees and press enter. I can add any angle I want there. So I click on OK now and what I've got now is the ability to track at angles of increments of 45 degrees and also that one angle of 35 degrees. It doesn't do increments of the 35 degrees though. It doesn't do that at all. It's one extra angle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to draft a very, very simple shape and I'm going to use multiple angles. So I'm going to go to the line command like so and my polar tracking is on now remember. So I'm going to start at this point here and click like so. And as I drag horizontally now can you see the polar tracking kicks in and I'm at zero degrees. So in the distance box there I'm going to type 7.5 and press enter. So there's my line 7.5 long. Now what I can do now is I can drag up this way and there's my 45 degree increment. Can you see that there? Now you'll notice I'm also getting the one degree increments. That doesn't matter. I want 45 like that. If I hold that at the 45 degrees by taking my hand off the mouse and type in a distance of 4 in the distance box and press enter, it'll draw that line at 45 degrees. Now what I'm going to do now is just go vertically upwards like so and just place a line to about there, keeping it in the 90 degree polar tracking. Just doesn't matter what distance it is and click like so. I'm then going to hit escape and I'm going to go back to the line command and this time I'm going to click here on the endpoint snap left click and I'm going to come up vertically using the polar tracking restricting myself to that vertical angle I'm going to type in 3 and enter now when I come across this way like this as I drag up you'll see that I can lock into that 35 degrees can you see that 
It's locked in on the polar tracking. And I'm going to type in a distance there of four as well, like so, and then enter. And then my line is here. So I'm just going to pan down a little. And then I'm going to come up a little bit vertically, like so. And I'm going to take that vertically upwards by two and then enter. I'm going to take that across this way. Now, because I've got polar tracking on, I can also utilize my object snap tracking, which is on down there on the status bar. If I hover over that endpoint there and just come up, everything will track together. There's the intersection. Click, take that down to the endpoint snap, click, enter to finish. And there's my shape utilizing both the 35 degree angle and the 45 degree angles that I set up in my polar tracking. So make sure that you work with accuracy using both orthogonal, ortho, and also polar as well. Remember with polar you can set any angle you want, even every single angle of one degree from zero to 360 degrees, if you want to go to that level of detail. So utilize those tools and practice with them for your AutoCAD professional certification exam.